is that I'm I'm relatively new compared to some some very senior surgeons probably on this forum too, and I'm essentially speaking about the four years of my um, refractive um, experiences. Um, essentially with the microkeratome and what I've learned and uh, what's happened to me and what the journey has been like. Um, my uh, best guess is that I do about 50% of SPK heads, uh, 45%, 130, and about 5%, 110 micron. This uh, is essentially my complications. And I'd like to just, as a young surgeon, um, inexperienced and with no supervision, quickly run through my, my complication list. And this is all of them. Uh, both uh, of my free caps happened in the first year of doing LASIK. Uh, um, both patients, I was pushing the ablation zone size, and I was quite aggressive in my, my choice. And um, I learned from this, and I haven't had a free cap since. With my mid-run rip, uh, I did the LASIK, standard LASIK. Was... On the second eye, the patient just got a fright while I was um, running the blade across the eye. We lost suction, and I was holding the flap in my left hand. I didn't have enough strobal bed to continue the, the LASIK. But uh, three months later, I just went below my, my initial 90, my SPK head. I just used to 130 and just made a recut. And we had a perfect, uncorrected 1.5 visual result uh, three months later. So no harm done. My probably biggest complication was a patient that, that moved and jerked while I was removing the speculum. And obviously, this is surgeon induced because I should have removed the speculum um, slower. And, um, but this can happen whether it was a microkeratome cut or a femto cut. Uh, but again, the, the, the flap came off and we just repositioned it. Um, we took our time and the patient rubbed his eye off to it. So he induced more folds. And a month after the surgery, we just went and ironed it out and we had a perfect result again. So those are all my complications. So do I do anything different to anybody else um, with such few complications? I don't think so. I'll run through my, my standard elastic technique. I do take my time to position the patient. I use Dan Reinstein's virtual straight jacket technique where I uh, try and maneuver the patient just to be really, really still. Yes, and then I, I have a, a little trick up my sleeve called Wilson. So from the movie Castaway, he had a friend called Wilson. And so I use Wilson during my procedures that are just a ball that I give the patients, just something to hold. It keeps their hands busy and they got something to squeeze. And I tell them, um, my last little trick that I have is that I use Pret Forte um, that essentially like fluorescent, it gives you uh, just a nice view of any microfolds. And I have had patients where I've had microfolds with the Pret Forte and then I just go back, I just wash again, I just reposition, I just take my time to stretch out the flap and then Pret Forte again and you've got a beautiful result. It's just another safety check. So what's my recipe for success? I feel... I have pretty decent results as a junior surgeon. And it's, of course, it's the Moria microkeratome. I mean, that's the only real barrier to this, um, to, to a beginner surgeon starting with LASIK. That's obviously a much more cost-effective solution than, than Femto. It's a lower running cost. I can go very thin. Here I have a case. You can just see it's normal cornea. That's all you need to see there. And it's a sub-490 micron cornea. With that refraction, minus 475, minus 250, and we lasered, and three years later, um, just showing the parameters, about 300 micro, micron stromal bed, and three years later, that was the cornea, perfect result, patient very happy, no ectasia, no risks. So you can go very thin, you can go quite big if you need to. Um, I often do hyperopes, yeah, you can see quite a large hyperopic ablation, just note the size there, 8.11. And if you note where the red ring is, and you note where the red ring is here, that's exactly the same positioning. And you can see I've got ample of space left on that eight, more than eight millimeter ablation. I could have gone nine millimeter optical. I've got a lot of variability with the micro, with the Moria microkeratome. Um, I use three different nomograms. The first one, obviously, uh, you can also adjust the speed and therefore adjust the depth that you would like. So, Katz et al. published this. Um, uh, had this publication in 2021 and they basically showed us with uh, <clears throat> the free flap risk with the different rings and the different stop combinations and as you can see the obviously the smaller stops you have the, the less risk and you can always just check on your exact cornea and your exact choice what your risk would be and then 
on the patient that you are doing, go and decide whether or not to proceed. Um, and another other nice thing from the study that came out was the min and max K values that they have. Using something like this really just helps you to, to stay safe. And I just found this after I had my free caps and I probably wouldn't have had free caps if I um, had this uh, study before I did those cases. So as you can see, pretty young and experienced surgeon. Um, I have a really low complication rate and I've, I, I believe I've got excellent results. My patients are very happy and it's all to, you know, it's all to thank the One Use Plus system for that. It's a cost-effective startup option. It was for me. Um, I can go very thin on thinner corneas. I can go big if I need to. I've got a lot of variability in um, the depth that I can go and it's a very, very safe system and easy to use. Thank you so much.